beloved. Okay, so listen, um, I've given a little bit of testimony because a lot of people don't know kind of what we're doing and what, what God has done in this house. And so I'm just going to share with you kind of a little bit of what God, I'm not going to give you the whole story, give you part of the story. And um, it's around 2000, and I'm going to get all my dates right, but I'll try to get my dates as close as I can. In 2012 or 13, some of that area, uh, I was approached uh, by a, a family, and uh, we have... On Wednesday nights, if you're not part of Wednesday night, shame on you. Another part of it, you got to be part of it because there's a lot of stuff going on. But um, um, there's like 80 kids in our yard. And uh, I was approached. I said, what are you doing with all those kids? And I was like, feed them, tell them about Jesus, and send them home. And try not to get anybody hurt. And so um, that's what we do. And so um, I was approached and he said, if, if I was willing to help you, would you? Accept my help, and I've been in church a long time, and so my first reaction is, "What do you want?" Yeah, I'm just being real, and uh, no strings attached, nothing. And um, you know, uh, so he said, "I want to, I want to help you," and so we were able to get the property that's on Highway Nine. There's eight and a half acres there that Brother Dean mowed for six years, five years, or whatever it was. That he, that he mowed every summer, or every spring, and so um, we were out there for we had that property for three or four years, and. Um, or whatever, five years, whatever it was. And uh, and God made a way for us to purchase another spot that I thought was, I felt like as a God thing, uh, there's already a property there. There's 32 acres there. It's on the highway. Um, the, the cost that would have cost us to put a foundation on that property on Highway 9 was the cost that we were able to save, uh, putting just redoing a building. And so it saved us around half a million dollars by just moving. And the property that we bought at Highway 99 was $90,000 for 32 acres and a 17,000 square foot building. And, and God has just been, has, has blessed us in that area. And so, and so it's been a long drawn out process. I am not a building person because I, I, I detest it. Um, I, I, I hate the process. I, I don't like the hurry up and wait. I don't like that it costs $10,000 to move a rock. I don't like that it, that it costs $10,000 to put a sewer system in. I don't like that it costs ten thousand dollars to do anything. I just hate it, and so I'm not a I'm not a building person. I talked to a, a couple of guys the other day. I said I don't know how you guys do this without losing your minds because uh, it would just drive me up a wall. And so uh, we were able to uh, purchase that. Uh, now we're moving forward on, and, and renovating that building. Uh, God has blessed us with that, and God has continued to bless us with that. Amen. Now I want to share with you kind of what God has kind of laid on our hearts. Um, I'm not your normal pastor. There's not an older guy going to come out here and, and take over for me. I mean, I'm just, I, I'm it. This, it doesn't get any better. Okay, so just letting you know. And so I'm not, I'm not that guy. I, I'm, I'm weird. Um, my, my vision is different. Uh, I, I see church different. I don't see church as, as most people see church. I think I see church as different. I see how God does things through people, and God uses people to do things. And um, I, I just. Uh, I just look at the church different. Um, I don't. I don't like. How can I say this? In my, in my spirit, I don't like just traditional church. But I'm not. But I also don't like the new. Everything is okay. Church. Yeah. And, and so I, I don't. I, I'm, I'm kind of a bridge. I call myself a bridge. I'm a, I'm a lot of old school, and I, but I have some new school. And so, but I feel how God uses people to do things. And I don't want to be a church that just exists. Amen. I want to be a church that God uses to, yes, to be the answer to somebody's prayer. Amen. Um, Amen. What do you mean? Uh, well, this is what I mean. If someone is, is in need and they're praying, God, I need you to meet this need in my life, I think that we ought to be able to meet that need. Amen. Amen. I'm not taking up an offering, so y'all calm down. Okay. <laughs> I'm not taking up an offering. So uh, put your wallets back up. I'm not taking up an offering. But... I think that God has some has some people strategically placed to meet needs in people's lives. Mm -hmm. And um, for example, um, I know in times past in this church, people have given away uh, cars, they've given away furniture, they've given away um, everything that I, you, know, you can think of: food, money. Uh, they've given God has moved on them to give away things in their life, and you know. And I believe that is what the church is supposed to be. 
Um, I don't think the church is just supposed to exist so we can come to church and meet and go home the same way we came in. Uh, I, just, I just don't think that's what church is about. And I know I'm weird, and I, I, I get it. I, I, I embrace it. I, I'm not like everybody else. I don't want to be like everybody else. And I don't care to be like everybody else. And so um, I may not be your cup of tea, but there's, I bet there's a cup of tea around you can find. And uh, that's okay. And uh, we, we love you anyway. Um, in the seven years I've been pastor here, there's been people come, people go. That doesn't mean I don't love them because I'm not here. Still love them no matter what. I'm going to love you if you're here, love you if you're not here. Uh, you're, you're part of my family. You're part of the family of God. And I, I love you more than anything. And so that's just how, that's how I feel about it. But I want to testify to you a little bit about how, what God has done. Uh, some people have, I noticed uh, on Facebook when we started tearing some steel and some metal off, that people were like, oh, they've already had services out there. No, we haven't. We've never had a service out there. Uh, we've never had a, anything out there other than a work day. And, uh, and so, but there's never been a service out there. Uh, when we first started, um, even the process a year ago, of buying that, pro that property, and, and uh, I just call it the Steel Horse property, and we buy that, that property out there and, and getting started, uh, I stood in front of this church and I said, I will not do this if we're going to go look like we moved into the Steel Horse and stuff and have a church. I will not do it. I will not do it. And, uh, and so they were like, no, we're going to do this. So let's go. Yay. And then you go, okay, but it's going to cost $400,000. <laughs> so everybody's all fired up to you know cost money, and then everybody gets kind of like yeah, gets real quiet. But uh, it, let me just share with you that uh, that God has uh, strategically placed you, and uh, I believe that with all my heart. Uh, the thing I love about our church, one of the things I love about our church, there's nobody that's rich in here <clears throat> that I know of. You might be, and I don't know. But uh, there's, but it's God's just using people. God's just using people. His people to do stuff. He's not, he's not using one person that's got, you know, uh, here's your check for twenty five million dollars. Now I'm not against that. Okay. I'm not against that. But if you want, you know, but I love that God is just using people and uh, and using us to do what God, but it was light on our hearts to do. And uh, so anyway, I just wanted to share with you just a, a little bit of that, a little tidbit of that, what's going on. I'll, I'll, I'll do more of that next week and take really what's kind of where, where God has really brought us from. It's a miracle that you're, that you're sitting in. It's a miracle that where God has brought us from. It's, it's just, I just, we get so used to it because we're in the miracle that we forget to look at it as a miracle. And we get so used to it that God, what God has done, because it takes a little time, and it's taken longer than you thought it should take to get to the promised land, and so you get a little weary. I, I, can I be transparent? I get weary too. It's hard to be up all the time. It's hard to be positive all the time. It's hard to believe all the time. I believe Jesus out my own belief. Come on, amen. It's hard to do that. It's hard to be up all the time. It's hard. And, uh, and so uh, I just want, to, uh, you know, uh, for so many years we were uh, promised things and disappointed and we're going to do this and never did it. And this and never did it. And I don't want to be that guy. And uh, so I just tell God, okay, God, this was your deal, not mine. And so let's just go forward. I'm not using that as a cop out not to do it. Uh, amen. We still have to do our, our share. Okay. Amen. That's just a little testimony. Now have you brought your Bible or the equivalent thereof? Cool. We're going to continue in our uh, uh, series of the remnant, and uh, I'll talk to you just a little bit, and I'll leave you alone. We'll do communion uh, together and the Lord's Supper. I, I love that. The remnant. The remnant is not just the leftovers. The remnant is part of the original, part of the original cloth. It's not just the leftovers. I, I don't want anybody to ever our 55 and over group. I, I never even it never even entered my mind that it was the leftover. And I said remnant. Uh, I just wanted somebody that was part of the original cloth, and that was what was in my head. And then until somebody said, "What well, they did the leftovers," I never thought of it until you said it. Now I feel guilty for calling it that. But anyway, um, no, it's not that. It's not that at all. It's that, that they're uh, they're they're amazing. They're part of the original part of this church. They're part of the original pillars of this church. They, uh, you know. Uh, 1959 is really when this church took off, and and uh, I know we had a charter in 1953. Before that, uh, they, they they asked to, to build this building that you're sitting in here it was built in the 50s, and so but there was a Indian schoolhouse here in 1950, and uh, they, they tore out, and uh, and so I know that but 1959 is really when this church started off, and 
There's people in this church this, this morning whose roots go back to 1959 in this church. And there's, there's people in the city this, in this building right now that whose parents or grandparents were the ones that are the reason you have a pew to sit on. Because they didn't have any money. But they built, they built a legacy for somebody, for another generation. Yeah, I, I wasn't going to share this next week, but I'm going to share it to you when you're right this second. The reason that I'm so dogmatic about doing something greater is because I'm, I'm trying to, it's not, I'm not building it for me. I'm not putting Jeff Nance Ministries on the side of it. It's not going to say that. It's not going to have Jeff Nance anything other than pastor on it and, and, or in my, on my door. But I'm building it for another generation. Yes. Amen. Another generation. Somebody that's coming behind me. I want, I, I want somebody that comes behind me who has, who has the calling of God in their life to have a facility that they, that they can use. To reach, the, the, they can reach the world. I, I don't want to just have, you know, I want to have a facility that they can use. I'm not building it for me. Amen. Okay. Amen. I don't know how I can get that across any better than that. I, I'm not, I'm not looking to say, wow, can you believe what Jeff Nance did? No, because it's not about me. Don't care about any accolades whatsoever. Don't care. About any, none of that stuff. I told you I'm weird. I don't care about that stuff. Don't care. Don't care anything about any of that nonsense. But what I care about is a generation that's coming behind me. I do care about the generation that's not, not only coming behind me, that's now coming behind them. Because the generation that's coming behind me is now in their 20s. And they're having children. That's the genera those are the generations. And I do care about the generation before me. Of course I do. I told you I have enough old school in me that I care about you. I, I love you. And I want you to have a nice place to come to church, a comfortable co place to come to church, that you have all these things in your life. See, because if I don't say that, then somebody gets up and they say something stupid like, I don't care about you. That's a lie of the devil. Well, he didn't say anything about it. I love you. I, I, it's not just about them. It's about everybody. We got to have everybody. In Acts chapter 1, verse 9 through 11. Acts chapter 1, verse 9 through 11. When he spoke in these things while they beheld, he was taken up in a cloud and received him out of their sight. Didn't see there's a blade. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Which also said, You men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from into heaven, shall from you into heaven shall also come like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Let's, I'll read that one more time. Which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Amen. I'll talk to you just about for a little bit about the remnant in the upper room. This is Palm Sunday. Let's talk about Palm Sunday. I'll get there in a minute. I'll talk to you a little bit about the, the upper room remnant, the, the group of people that were in the upper room. That group of people. There was a bunch of people in Jerusalem, but there was a remnant part in the upper room. There was a bunch of people in, in the city, but there was just a, a few people that saw Jesus ascend into heaven. There was a bunch of people that were around, but not anybody that was really there. You know what I'm saying? There's a bunch of people that were in the area, but they weren't really in the area with me, okay? The Holy Ghost, and I love this in Acts chapter 1 and 8, says the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. The Holy Ghost shall come upon you, right? Amen. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses both unto me uh, to, unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. One more time. But ye shall receive what? Power. Power to do what? Thank you. When shall you receive power? When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you shall be witnesses to both me in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. I love it because this is what Jesus said. He says, go to this place and what's going to happen is this. You're going to receive power. What, what power to do what? They'd already received, he'd already given the power to heal the sick, to, to, to heal the blind. They'd already done all those things in Jesus' name, right? Mm -hmm. He's talking to the disciples, right? Mm -hmm. He'd already done all these things, and they'd already, they'd already done all this stuff. And he said, but you, you, you're, you're going to receive power. 
To be a what? A witness. Amen. What is a witness? I'm so glad you asked. Here's what a witness is. A person who saw or can give a first-hand account of something. Amen. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Is there anybody in here that can give a first account of, uh, a first account of, of what God did in your life? Amen. Okay, come, on, come on with me. Yes. Amen. Is there anybody in the house today that can say, you know what, here's, here's, here's what's going on. This is what God did for me. Yes. This yes. is how God touched me. Amen. This yes. is listen. I don't. Woo. I don't believe in that Jesus. I don't know if he's real. Okay, I don't either. But listen. Okay, hear, hear me. This is what he did for me. Yes. Yes. I don't believe in that church stuff. Okay, me either. But this is what Jesus did for me. Amen. Yes. Can I share with you? Can I have a first-hand account of what he did for me? Yes. I am a witness into my own life. I, I know what he did for me. I, he may not have done anything for you, but I, let me just share with you what he can do for you. Yes. Maybe you don't know Jesus. Maybe, you don't, maybe you're in this, in this house today, and you don't even know why you're here. You don't even know why you came here today. First of all, you don't care about a church moving into an old bar that God, God's going to consecrate and make it great. No, I, listen, maybe you don't care anything about that. Maybe you don't even have any idea why you're here today. But let me, let me share with you this. Here's the, here's the trick, okay? That's a bad word. Here's, what, here's the thing. If you can just tell somebody a first-hand account of what Jesus did for you, you are a remnant of what God has for this for this world. Yes. Yes. You are a remnant because listen, so many people do not share their faith. They don't. You know why? Because it makes you feel weird. That's right. Do it anyway. That person that God's been putting on your heart. And you work with them, I just say go to the Bible say, you're going to split hell wide open. Bang, here's the Bible. I just say do that. Okay? You're going to bust hell wide open. And God told me to take it. Didn't say that. But you walk up to them and say, no, this is going to be kind of weird, but I just really feel like I need to tell you what God did for me. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Just do it. Yeah. You don't do that. Yeah, I do all the time. Yeah. I do. Yes. Well, you're the preacher. You're supposed to. <laughs> What's one of the problems is we put all the all the onus on the church to do what we're supposed to do as Christians. If we do a great, we do a big enough event, we'll get enough people, then they can share the gospel. If we if we feed enough people, then enough people will come, then we can share the gospel. There's nothing wrong with either of those things. I'm all down. Let's do it. Okay, I'm down. But there's, there has to be some personal responsibility involved in it. Just tell somebody what Jesus did for you. Well, he ain't done nothing for me. He shut up. Okay. Look, listen. Right. He's breaking heart for everybody else. Listen. But Jesus' last words were this. Disciples, you shall be witnesses. Yes. 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 Wait a minute, Jesus. I don't make a witness. Come on, come on. He said we're going to see power, right? Okay. I'm supposed to get power. Hour, okay? After the Holy you have to say it like that. That's what the call is for. Okay? And so, after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Huh, that's what the call is for. All right. And ye shall be witnesses. Wait a minute. I'm going to receive power. Great. Hallelujah. We all have to do. We are the power. See, some of y'all say it. Okay, listen. We got the power. Okay. But we have the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Okay. Yes. But in my experience, and you may have different experience, but in my experience as a Pentecostal kid, we have polluted that verse to be scream and run. Right. Yeah. 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 You said it. And lay hands on the sick and watch them recover, which we should. Yes. Amen. Yes. That's that's our call. That's what we're supposed to do. Jesus said we could do that. But we we line people up and knock them down like money foo foo. And then if they don't get, if you if, if they don't get the trick, uh -huh. it's not the trick. No, it's the power. Then we feel like God let us down. Uh -huh. Just talk about my experience, not yours. I'm a witness. Okay? Amen. And so, so the church has kind of 
I don't know if you notice this or not, but even in the Pentecostal circles, the church has kind of backed off of the Holy Ghost thing. Yeah. Why? Because we're not sure if we can trust Him to do what He says He can do. I'm not sure, Jesus. God, listen, I believe in Jesus because Jesus died for me. I, that, I, I understand. I got, he died on a cross, three days in the tomb. Out, boom, I'm back. And so he came back and said, went and showed himself for 40, 40 days, okay? And to all, all, he showed himself. He ascended to the Father yes. and said, Father, Father, send him somebody because they got to have some help. And so he sent the Holy Ghost now, right? Yes. Yes. yes, God. Now I can believe in Jesus. I can believe in God the Father. Why? Because God the Father, he's the, he's the creator of the Son Amen. who saved me. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. <laughs> He's the creator of all the all things. You know, and Jesus, the Bible says that without Jesus was nothing made that was made. Okay, I get it. Okay, so I understand that. I, I believe in the Father and the Son. But the Holy Ghost is just kind of, I don't know. Because we tried to make him weird. And he's not weird. We're weird. That's right. He's not weird. No. He's my comforter. He's my helper. He's my convictor. Yes. Mm. He, he's all those things in one. He's a lot of things to me. He's a, he's the spirit part of God. Yes. He is that part of God. He's not he's not the Father. He's not the Son. He's the Holy. You can say Spirit if you want, but I say I'm a Holy Ghost guy. I say Holy Ghost. He's that guy because ghosts scare people. <laughs> so he's the Holy Ghost. And so I shall actually receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon me. And you shall be, I'm going to be, I'm going to be Superman. <laughs> Witness. Amen. Oh. Come on. Witness. Oh. Witness. Uh, that's right. Man, I got to talk to people. Yes, man. Yeah. Just do it. I hate people. <laughs> <laughs> that's supposed to be. Man, I got to talk to people. I gotta, I gotta actually share what Jesus did to me, for me, and with me. I gotta actually share that with somebody else. Can't the preacher just do it? Can't Paul just do? Can't, can't, can't somebody just do it? Can we just clone uh, uh, Christine Kane and let her do it? Just clone her. Let her do it. She's better at it than I am. Let her do it. And I'll, and I'll send money to her ministry. Whatever. Can, can we just? Can we just let somebody else do it, Jesus? Why do I have to be a witness? Here I am to save the day. No. No. There has to be a remnant. There has to be somebody that says, you know what? This is what part of I want to do. I want to be part of this thing. I want to be part of this. Yes. Jesus, I love you more than I love my own self. And Jesus, I, want, I love you. I want to be part of this. And so anyway, they return back to the upper room after Jesus ascends. I'm trying to get back on track. They were back in the upper room. And all the, all the disciples were there except for Judas Scary. And we understand that Judas betrayed Jesus with a kiss, right? We understand that he felt so badly about it, he threw the money back to the Jews. And they said, we don't want this dirty money. <coughs> it's sad to me that the devil wouldn't even take the money. Yeah. Oh, that's another sermon for this week. <laughs> And one of, one of Judas' main problems was, I love it. One of Judas' main problems was that he separated himself from the group. Yeah. What do you mean? Mm. Peter denied Jesus. Yeah. And he stayed with the group. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Judas betrayed Jesus and separated himself and hung himself. Okay. You with me? Yeah. Stay with the group. Amen. I don't care how many times you've messed up, how many times you've sinned against God. I don't care how many, how many times you've denied Him. I don't care how many times you feel like you've betrayed Him. I don't care about all these things. If you don't stay with the group, you're going to end up dead. Yes. You have to stay with the group. Yes. Stay with the group. Yes. Stay with the remnant. Stay, stay with the, listen, they all scattered except for John. But they all met up again. Yes. Except for Judas who had already killed himself. So they go back to the upper room and everybody's there except for Judas. There was a Judas there, but not Judas Iscariot. They were not divided, but they were together. Men and women praying together. They didn't have separate prayer rooms. No. They were praying. You know why? Because we need each other. Amen. We don't need just, you know, okay, me and y'all get over here because you'll be lusting over her if you don't get over here and you can't even concentrate on what you're praying about. <laughs> 
No, 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 that's just, I'm just kidding. But just, but men, you get in this prayer room, and women, you get in this prayer room, and, and then, then we'll pray together. I'm not saying it doesn't work, but I'm just saying, but they didn't do that. They just prayed all together. They just waited all together. Maybe they didn't have separate rooms to go to. I don't know. But they just, but they just, they prayed all together. Why? Because I think that that Jesus would rather have us all together than separated. I think, that I think Jesus would rather have us have his church body praying together than praying separately. I, I just think that Jesus would rather have everybody together. And I love that Peter stood up and said, "Yeah, there's about 120 of us here." Okay, thanks, Peter. Thanks, buddy. All right. I don't know why he said it, but that's what he said. I think there's 120 people. That's Acts 1 to 15. You want to read it? He said, they were, they were not divided, but they were together. A remnant of people, 120 got together Amen. and prayed. 120. It's pretty impressive. The week before they had been singing, this is where I got into Paul Sunday. The week before they had been raising you know, the, the palm leaves and throwing them down. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. As Jesus came in Jerusalem on a colt. Behold the king of the Jews. Hey, woo! Hallelujah. Yippee! Jesus is coming. Thank God for you, Jesus. For what for you, Jesus? I don't know what I would do. And five days later, they were yelling, crucify. Five days later. Jesus came riding in on a colt. He came with the approval of people, but soon the approval became people who sought his life. So glad you're here, Jesus. So glad you're, thank God. Oh, you didn't do it like I thought you should do it. I'm done. You may be here this morning and, and those that you used to love and used to love you, maybe they turned their back on you and you're feeling all alone. And you don't know why you're even coming to church. You're mad at God. See, here's, here's my, can I just be transparent? People, I've heard people say this. You're not supposed to be mad at God. True. But if you are, you're not supposed to lie about it. Okay? You know why? Because He already knows you're mad. You know something that God has never said? I'll give you something. This is right now. Okay, right? Get your pencil ready, right? This is what God never said. You know, it just occurred to me. He's never said that. Ever. You know why? Because he knows everything from the beginning to the end. He's never said, you know what I just thought of? He's never said that. Because he knows everything from the beginning to the end. Amen. And when you, when, he, when you say something like, God, I'm angry. I just say come with disrespect. Have you ever been mad at your earthly father, your earthly mother, your earthly whoever, your guardian, whatever? And you don't come up there, I hate you, I hate you, I'm mad at you, pow. Okay. And so, but, but you don't come with disrespect. Right. Amen. I don't know, nobody in here has ever been mad or angry at God at all. But I'm talking about, I, I'm a witness. Okay. And so, okay, and, and I've been angry. There's nothing wrong with being angry. There's nothing wrong about sitting while you're angry. Come on, help me out in a minute. Amen. Okay. But God doesn't want us to be angry with him, but he already knows that you are, so I want you to just be truthful with him and say, God, I don't understand. I don't understand. I, I do everything I'm supposed to do. I, I read my word. I pray. I seek your face. I, I give my time. I give my offer. God, I do everything that your word says to do, and I just don't understand. I'm angry. I'm angry. Maybe you're here this morning and you are angry at God. You don't even know why you're here. You don't even want to be here, but you're here because the Holy Ghost said you're coming and dragged you over here. And listen, I said you're coming. And maybe this morning you feel like you're betrayed. You feel like you're betrayed. And can I share with you, there's a remnant. There's a remnant of people who are still praying and seeking God's face. Do you know that you feel that tug when you walk in? Yes, amen. You know what that is? People you don't even know praying for people they don't even know. Amen. People, as, with people that, are, that are praying and they go to this church and, and are praying, God, 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 give us souls. God bless us. God, help us today. God, 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 God. That's what that is. Amen. That's what it is. 
It's people praying for you that you don't even know, and they don't even know who they're praying for. They're just praying that God, God let us be a, that God let us be a remedy to the sickness. God help us to <laughs> share our faith. God let us be a remnant. So there is a remnant. There's still a, a figurative 120 in an upper room praying and waiting for an answer. Amen. Yes. Thank they're still praying and waiting for a promise, wow. not just for them, you, but for you yes. and for me. Uh, you're going to have to give me scripture and verse for that, brother. I will. Hang on. They're, they're praying for you. And they're praying for me. Not everyone, listen, not everyone who has, ex has experienced the baptism of the Holy Ghost was in the upper room. I wasn't there. But I had the experience. Yes, thank you. Help me, somebody. But the answer, the Holy Ghost, he, when he... He, he fell when, when the remnant came together. He fell when the remnant came together and prayed. There's a, there's a remnant in an upper room. It may not be an upper room like I've got to visit in Israel, but it, it's different. An upper room that I got to visit in Israel is a beautiful place. Beautiful arched ceilings and vaults. It's, it's beautiful. I don't know if that's the exact same place, but it's a pretty place. And I don't know if that's exactly where they were at. Nobody knows exactly where they are at, but it was similar to that. But when they all got there and they, the rim that came together and prayed, all of a sudden, all of a sudden something changed. Amen. Something yeah. changed. A prayer answered. An answer to a prayer. What was the answer? Jesus ascended. We're by ourselves. He said, wait for the promise. Right. Okay, let's go wait and pray. Yeah. And so they went back and they prayed and they waited. They stayed and they waited for our promise. Yeah. Not just their promise. Somebody help me. It wasn't just for them. It was for us as well. Our promise. They stayed for this scripture to be fulfilled. Acts chapter 2, verse 21. Acts chapter 2, verse 21 says this. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yes. That's not just for them. Yes. That's for us. Yes. I know. Listen, listen, don't even. I get it. Jesus already paid the penalty. He had already risen. He had already said it. I get it. But listen to me. There, I, I don't know if you know this or not, but the Holy Ghost sure helps me walk what Jesus brought into my life. Yes. It sure helps me walk what Jesus brought into my life. I don't know about you. How about this one if you don't like that one? Acts chapter 2, verse 39. It says this. For the promise, the what? Promise. Is unto you. To your children and to they that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall what? <coughs> they stayed and they prayed for those scriptures. Because there's so many people, listen, that are sitting here today and you think that that's just back in the day. No, it's not. There's a remnant that still believes that Christ is still the answer. There's a remnant that still believes the Holy Ghost still is, is relevant for today. There's still those that are praying and seeking God, not just so you can have a nice place, but so that the church can go forward forever. Amen. They still believe. This, listen, there, is there a remnant in this church today? I believe there is. Some yes. people who have been through all these things. Listen, there's some people sitting here right now. You've been through your Palm Sunday. When you said, Hosanna, oh God, I'm so excited for you to be here. There's times in your life crucified. Because you didn't give me the house I wanted. You didn't give me the car I wanted. You didn't give me the stuff I wanted. I, where's my Boaz? Okay, so listen, listen. You didn't get all those things. You've been through that. And you've been through your Easter time when you really figured out he's alive. Amen. He's alive. He's alive. You've been through all of it. You've been through all three of those stages. And listen, you may have celebrated and denied and doubted, but you stayed with the group. Amen. You stayed with the group. And all of our failures, our problems, our doubts, and our crazy, He's never let us go. He's never walked away. He didn't ascend into heaven without giving us a promise. He always said, listen, I'm going to send you a comforter. I'm going to send you another that's just like me, a comforter. Not everyone believes like you do. Amen? Amen. Not everybody believes like you do. That's right. Not everybody has the experience that you've had. That's right. Not everybody knows what you know. That's right. 
But there is a remnant. Amen. Yes. There are some people who are part of the original cloth. And my God, they know God. Yes. They've walked through some hard times in their lives. But they kept walking. They've had some hard issues in their lives. But they kept walking. Amen. They've doubted. But they've kept walking. Yes. They felt betrayed. But they kept walking. They felt like nobody loved them, nobody cared about them, but they kept walking. Listen, nobody believes like you believe. Nobody has that in their, in their spirit like you have. Nobody has your testimony. Nobody has your witness. Nobody has what you have. Amen. Share it with somebody else. But listen, there is a remnant that's praying and waiting They're to bring an answer to generations that are to come. Some of you are looking at your phones and listening. Listen to it. Listen to it. Why is it okay for us to cheat another generation? Because we're too stinking lazy to do what it takes to give a generation Jesus. Why is it that we, we are so wrapped up in our needs and our desires and our wants and what we have to have and us, if the church isn't like this, I don't like it and if the nursery isn't like this, I don't like it and we in the generation behind us is just saying, would somebody please love me Amen. enough yes. to tell me about Jesus? Yes. Yes. In the generation before me is just saying, would somebody please love me enough to care about me even in my, in my, old, in my older elder state? Would somebody please yes. just call me on the phone? Would somebody please Here just come go. by and, and let me know that they love me? Would somebody please just come visit me? Amen. Come on. Yes. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know. I don't know. I told you I'm weird. I told you I'm weird. And I don't see church as my entertainment for the week. It's my wife. Amen. My wife gets so mad at me sometimes because I spend so I neglect my family sometimes, and I don't mean to, but I do. I don't, I don't mean to neglect them, but you guys don't understand. And maybe, maybe some of you do, some of you don't understand. I haven't always been a nice guy. I haven't always been good. I haven't always been the strapping, handsome young Christian man. <laughs> <laughs> He kept writing me in, and I kept starting to write myself out. He kept writing me back in the school. Yeah. And I'm so thankful for that because he cared enough for me that he didn't give me what I deserved. And that makes me weird. That's okay. Because I don't want to forget where I came from. I don't want to forget what God brought me from. There's a remnant of people that still believe that Jesus is the answer. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Well, what's the question? Any question you have? Is the answer? I don't care. That's right. There's whatever you need at that time. Yes. Church, I just wanted to share with you a little bit today about who you are. See, you're not just here by mistake. And right. I, I don't care if you were a product of a one-night stand or a 40-year marriage. You're not here by mistake. And God loves you. Amen. And you have a testimony that nobody else has. Right. You have your own loaf. Remember when we were preaching about your loaves? Remember that? It's one one time. And I'll just throw it out there. Uh, in, the, in Israel, when they used to, at the temple, they had, each tribe had their own loaf. They didn't have to share one big loaf there. Each got their own loaf. And so, when you get saved, God doesn't make you share loaves. He gives you your own loaf. Amen. Amen. Make sense? Yes. 
Do you share salvation? Of course, everybody has, but you have your own salvation. That's weird, but it's the question. So I'm glad. I'm glad when I get to come to the house of the Lord because I know what God's done in my life. And I'm very thankful for what God's done for me. Amen. 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 Amen.